Well, good evening. I'm glad that you're here today. I was blessed to have some news that I felt like I needed to sort of pass on. I had one of my five nursing homes to call me the other day wanting to know if I would come Sunday morning and do a program from the outside of the nursing home of where they would put the people in the activity area where I could bring them music and a message. I thought that was very sweet of them. I immediately started thinking of a message because I haven't spoke to these people in probably, it seems like three months. It might not be quite that long, but it seems like it. But I'm looking forward to talking to these folks again. And I wrote down a little bit of notes to use for that morning. And I'm not sure if I'll use it or not, but um, here it is. Just pretend, if you would, that you're watching this from the activities corridor of a nursing home. See if it relates to you. See if it witnesses to you. Today, we live in flesh. You and I live in flesh. We feel loneliness. We feel pains and we feel hurts. Our health is not the best in the world. There's a lot of things that I deal with. We have very few enjoyments. Now you got to remember people in the nursing home have very few enjoyments. Every day is more the same. They wake up, they eat breakfast, they go back to their room, they turn on the TV, they do a little reading, they sleep most of the time. Every day, more the same. We have services today to remind us of God. The reason I come out here and make the video is to remind people about God. You got to remember these folks are stuck in an environment that they don't have a whole lot of say so. But today's service reminds us of God and His love, His kindness, and His written word. I'm thankful for His love. I'm thankful for his kindness that he has showed to me. I'm thankful for the written down word. In the beginning was the word. And I'm thankful for the word of God. Today we live in flesh. And what we have to do is be reminded today of the service of the reason he came. What was the reason that he came for? He came for man. He came to help man to be able to see their need for Jesus. The reason that he lived. What was the reason that he lived for? He lived so that you and I could have life and have life more abundantly. He also lived that God could get glory in the Christian, the person that is saved, the person that is born again. The reason that he came and the reason that we have the service is we have the service because of the need of our salvation. The only way that you and I get to heaven is by the means of salvation. 
Without salvation, no man can see the Lord. Without salvation. Salvation is it should have been at the very top of the list. The need of our purpose. Lots of times, people that are in the nursing home, they don't fully grasp their purpose. They're basically waiting on life to get over with. A good majority of them do. The need of our purpose. What is the need of your purpose today? If I was to ask you the question that I plan on asking them, what is the need of your purpose? What is your purpose? Well, my purpose is to come out and proclaim what I feel is the gospel and to tell people about the gospel. That's my purpose. That's the reason that I live for is right now the ministry that I have is shut down right now. I don't have that ministry anymore right now. I can't do anything for them folks right now. But see, come Sunday... I hope to let them know that they have a purpose. They're just not there. And the reason that we have the Sunday service is the need of our witness. You know, the folks in the nursing home that believe in the Lord Jesus and they see their family and their friends and their people that live with them and live around them their witness is important to the staff, to the nurses, to the doctors, to the administration. Their life matters. Their life matters to God. You know, it might be that, that they will never hear that from anyone else. But their life matters to God, whether it matters to family, friends, relatives, staff, co-workers, whoever it may be, their life matters to God. And your life ain't over yet. That's my plan on telling them what I wrote down here. Your life ain't over yet. Whoever I'm talking to tonight, your life ain't over yet. Pretend you're in an 80 and 90 year old body. Your life ain't over yet. If you're able to click the button to turn this video on, your life ain't over yet. But you know how I started out this message? Today we live in flesh. But that day awaits. I'm talking about the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord awaits. You know, I had to ask myself, what could I say and what could I do to be an encouragement to them folks after almost three months of not having any message at all? You know what? I'm privileged to be able to go and take my truck and to get in the back of my truck and have the ability to play music. And have the ability to sit on a little stool with my little stand. And have it where I can be able to share the gospel to people that might be literally right in front of me. But yet I can't have contact with them. But there's certainly nothing wrong with ears to hear what thus saith the Lord. John 14 is the verses that I plan on reading. I'm going to read them to you now like I would read it to them. John chapter 14 is probably one of my favorite passages of Scripture. Of all of the Bible, I don't really know of anything more rewarding than to try to Read someone good news. See, they go through their hurts and their trials and their problems and their health and all of this stuff that they go through. They need to be reminded that God loves them and God cares for them. 
See, in the 13th chapter at the end, Peter wanted to follow the Lord and Jesus said, you're going to deny me three times. And he didn't believe that. But at the end of 13, you'll read in here where Peter did deny the Lord. And I'll read you that verse. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? That's what Peter said to Jesus. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. But you know, I've always wondered why it was that it was almost like Jesus totally changed the subject. From the end of chapter 13 to the beginning of chapter 14, he immediately says, let not your heart be troubled. Was he talking to Peter? I think he was. Was he talking to a few more? Yes, because the Bible says that he did. But listen to what he told Peter at this time. Let not your heart be troubled. Is our heart going to be troubled? Ye believe in God. That's a question. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. Is that a question? It could be turned into a question. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you people, this is good news to people that are alone, people that are born again, Christians, saved, children of God. This is great news to them. That's all they had to look forward to is going home. If you happen to know the Lord, that's the only thing that you look forward to is going home. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. What a promise. What a glorious promise to tell somebody that hadn't heard the gospel in months. What better message could you bring? And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know, but you know, this man right here next, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus just told him, I am the way. Or he already said, in my father's house are many mansions. And he says, and if I go, I will go and prepare a place for you, and I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And then here Thomas is basically saying, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus so eloquently said these words, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If he had known me, Ye should have known my father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Now, he's aiming his message a little bit at Thomas right there, because Thomas is the one that speaks up. Then Philip speaks up here in verse 8. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the father. And it satisfies us. That's what that means. Suffice, mean, meaning what he's saying is it's, it will satisfy us if we know, if you show us the Father and listen to what he says, Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He, he that hath seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Let me finish this message. I didn't come out here to talk too awful long. These verses here are for the saved. This is not aimed at the person that is lost. 
My job is to make sure that they know Jesus. My job is to make sure that they hear about salvation. My job is to make sure that they do an examination of their selves. These verses are for the saved. And the question I'm going to get to ask them, are you saved? You know, a lot of people is going to say yes because they are a church member. You know what? There's a lot of people that are church members. That doesn't mean that they're saved. It just means you're affiliated with the church. The question I'm going to ask them, are you saved? Are you redeemed? And I'm going to explain that word redeemed. If I had something that I wanted to go into Walmart, say I wanted to go buy this little roll of tape right here. You know what I'm going to have to do to go in to get that tape? I'm going to have to go put my hands on it, and I'm going to have to take it to the front counter, and I'm going to have to open up my wallet and give them a few dollars for this roll of tape, and they're going to give me a receipt, and they're going to let me walk out with a bag no harm to me whatsoever because the tape is now mine because I purchased it. That's what Jesus did. He purchased our redemption when he went to Calvary. I'm going to explain that. Are you saved? I'm going to ask him that. Are you redeemed? I'm going to ask him that. Are you his child? I'm going to ask them that. That's my job to go down there. My job is not to go down there just to give them a little bit of goosebumps. My job is to make sure that the Holy Spirit examines them. And they seek out who it is that they need. And they need Jesus. If they don't know Jesus, then I can bring the best message in the world. But why not keep it simple? You know what else I'm going to tell them? You can today. I'm going to ask them, are you saved? Are you redeemed? Are you a child of his? You can be today. And I don't know who I'm talking out there today on the video, but you can be saved too. You can be saved today. The Bible says in one place, today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Harden not your heart. You know what you need to do? You need to ask him to save you. Just like I'm going to get them to ask them for salvation. I'm going to let them ask Jesus to ask Jesus in their heart. You know, I can't put Jesus in their heart. I can read to them what the Bible says. But only Jesus can put himself in their heart. All I can do is be a road map. All I can do is be a map. I have a, I have a map somewhere in my, in my room right here. And it's a map of, of the state of Florida. And that map gives me a guide. And I don't see it right now. But everybody knows what a map is. You know what I'm going to do? You know what I get the privilege of doing? I get the privilege of telling people the road map to get to heaven. I get that privilege to do that. I might even be talking to someone right now that I'm giving you the road map. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You have to believe in him. You have to believe that he lived and that he died and that the Lord raised him from the dead. And he's on the right hand of God the Father because he's there gone to prepare us a place. And he said, if I go and prepare a place, I will come again and receive you unto myself. I don't know of a better message I could bring to a bunch of lonely, hurting people. I need your prayers for Sunday morning. Thank y'all for listening.